I'd like to call to order the uh, Board of Education meeting for Monday, January 23rd. Roll call, please. Mr. Dahl. Here. Mrs. Dernbaugh. Here. Dr. Rohr. Here. Mr. Schroyer. Here. And Megan is here, but she'll here. be she'll be back. Please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, motion for approval of the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Next is honors. Would you handle that? Thank you. So tonight, uh, it's great to see all of you here tonight uh, for a meeting. Uh, it's always a fun night uh, to be able to recognize our um, Central Education Foundation classroom grant projects. Uh, so to turn it over to uh, Sheree Calopy and Adam Trello, they're going to go through a, a quick presentation, and our goal is to recognize all of our projects tonight. Well, good evening, everyone. As you can see, we have a, a large number of our, our teaching staff members here in the audience tonight, and we're excited to also have with us, and they will do most of the presentation tonight, uh, Dave Gorell and Rajiv Goyle from the Centerville Education Foundation. So uh, here in a minute, we're going to have them come up and they're going to um, announce the recipients of our teacher grants or classroom grants from the uh, Education Foundation. Um, but Ms. Colopy has a couple um, instructions for our teachers before that starts. Um, we do, are in a little bit different arrangement. So you're going to come up this side to get your checks from here at the podium, um, exit this way across the board. And then after um, they're all awarded, we will meet in the back of Central for a photo. So, thank you. Thank you, Dave and Rajiv. Hello, my name is Rajiv Goyle, and I'm proud to be on the Board of Trustees of the Centerville Education Foundation. This is Dave Gorell. He's the president of the Centerville Education Foundation. Um, for those that may not know, CES mission is to help maintain Centerville schools as the best place to learn. And we run several programs each year in support of that mission. We host the annual Hall of Fame Awards each spring. And in fact, right now, we are accepting nominations on our website at centervilleeducation.org. So if you know an outstanding teacher, a distinguished alumni, or an amazing volunteer or community member who deserves this recognition into the Hall of Fame, please consider nominating them on our website. CEF also administers and awards scholarships to graduating seniors who are off to college. And information about those scholarships can also be found on our website at centervilleeducation.org. Our other big program involves classroom grants, and that's why we're here today. Teachers at all levels submit proposals for special projects in their classrooms that go above and beyond the normal curriculum. CEF evaluates those proposals and then awards grant money to those teachers so they can purchase the supplies they need in order to turn those ideas into reality. This year, we had a record number of submissions, and CEF board members selected 25 projects that we felt will provide enhanced learning for and experiences for our students. Of course, these grants wouldn't be possible without the generous donations from hundreds of parents, alumni, and community members. We thank all of them for their support. Because of our donors, we are able to give over $12,000 in grant money to Centerville teachers today. <clears throat> and with that, I'd like to announce this year's classroom grant recipients. I know that some teachers were unable to be here tonight, but we'll make sure to get their checks to them. Um, and I do have 25 of these, so I'm going to, um, you know, do my best to respect your time and try and get through these quickly. Um, but I do want to, you know, make sure and recognize everybody. <clears throat> okay, so number one, the title of the project is Let's Get Muddy from Primary Village North. Amy Mount, Mary Smith, Elise Henderson, Tiffany Schaefer, Amy Nigro, and Michelle Ellinger. This grant will benefit special needs classrooms at PVN and will be used to purchase mud and rain suits for kids so that more of them can participate in outdoor learning experiences even on a wet day. Congratulations. First grade word work materials. Primary Village South, Haley Kane. 
This grant will benefit the first graders in Miss Kane's class and will be used to purchase word beads, letter tiles, and alphabet stampers, all innovative tools to help kids practice word building and examining the relationship between sounds and letters. Congratulations. Multi-Sensory Learning, Primary Village South, Mackenzie Richards. This grant will benefit all kindergartners and first graders in inclusion classrooms at PVS and will be used to purchase tactile letters, alphabet stamps, and gel writing boards. These multi-sensory tools allow students to practice phonics and word work concepts. Congratulations. <laughs> Play and Take Math, Primary Village South, Amy Kogel. This grant will benefit all kindergartners and first graders at PVS and will be used to purchase game boards and pieces specially designed around practicing counting, numeral recognition, and beginning addition and subtraction. Students will be able to borrow a game board to take home and play with their family, all while having fun doing it. Congratulations. <laughs> the Makery, Primary Village South, Jody Gonzalez. This grant will benefit the first graders in Ms. Gonzalez's class and will be used to purchase a variety of tinkering and building materials such as wheels, dowels, nuts, bolts, fasteners, straws, tubes, and tape. These supplies will promote the creation of a maker space, sparking creativity, design, problem solving, and perseverance. Congratulations. <laughs> Tech Time STEM Bins. This applies to all elementary schools by Brenda Silverman. This grant will benefit all second through fifth grade students in the entire district and will be used to purchase magnet tiles, Lego bricks, Kiva planks, craft sticks, and more, creating STEM bins which allow students to engage in engineering and architecture and providing them with theoretical and practical hands-on experiences. Congratulations. <laughs> On to the individual elementary schools. Math Thinkers Through Board Games, Klein Elementary, Nikki Stasienko. This grant will benefit all second graders at Klein and will be used to purchase math-centric board and card games such as Connect4, Sequence, and Tenzi. These games not only strengthen the students' math skills, but also promote skills like problem solving, taking turns, handling disappointment, and strategizing for success. Congratulations. Sensory Path also from Klein Elementary, Susan Foy. This grant will benefit all third graders at Klein with sensory needs and will be used to purchase various sensory items to allow struggling students to regulate their emotions and return to the classroom ready to learn. Congratulations. <laughs> Homerama, Driscoll Elementary. Tish Kemp, Kelly Gartz, Katie Combs, Jessica Sanders, Summer Schaefer, Heather Price, and Taylor Mackle. This grant will benefit all third graders at Driscoll and will be used to purchase various art supplies and blank books, giving students what they need to create their homorama, a three-dimensional diorama depicting the habitat of an animal of their choice. Congratulations. Purposeful Podcast, Driscoll Elementary, Paul Bizarro, Lauren Chapman, and Lynn DeClark. This grant will benefit all fifth graders at Driscoll and will be used to purchase lapel microphones. As part of one of their writing units, students write a research-based essay, an argumentative essay, and produce a podcast to go along with it. Congratulations. <laughs> Creative Club, Normandy Elementary, Emily Garrison and Sarah Clark. This grant will benefit all students in the bridge program at Normandy <clears throat> and will be used to purchase various art supplies, including paint, brushes, construction paper, and clay. The project involves a weekly art lesson where students can extend their content knowledge through art and other creative processes. Congratulations. <clears throat> Digital Book Talk Recording Studio, also from Normandy Elementary. Erica Glavin, Jackie Harvey, Megan Johnson, and Kim Whalen. This grant will benefit all fourth graders at Normandy and will be used to purchase room dividers. A digital book talk provides an easy, personalized approach to supporting students' reading. These dividers will provide students a little bit of privacy while they're recording their digital book talks. Congratulations.
Lego Lunch Club, Normandy Elementary, Emily Garrison, and Sarah, Sarah Storer. The Lego Lunch Club is open to all fifth graders at Normandy and is a project to integrate students who receive specialized instruction with their typical peers to help support their social skills. During Lego Lunch Club, students have the opportunity to eat lunch and then build with Legos after, fostering friendships among a diverse group of students. Congratulations. <coughs> Normandy Sensory Room, also from Normandy Elementary, Emily Garrison and Brooke Ross. This grant will benefit all students at Normandy with sensory needs. This project will purchase various sensory items to create a safe space for students to self-regulate when they need a break, allowing them to regain focus to prepare for learning in the classroom. Congratulations. <laughs> Play Therapy Sand Tray, Stingley Elementary, Nicole McDonald. This grant will benefit all students at Stingley and will be used to purchase sand tray kits. These therapy sand trays help to make social emotional learning more fun, allowing students to act out how a problem happened and work through what skills they could use to help solve the problem. Congratulations. Steam Arcade, Stingley Elementary, Craig Shabu. This grant will benefit all fourth graders at Stingley and will be used to purchase LED bulbs, copper tape, and batteries. <clears throat> the project will have students create their own arcade or fair type games, including a working circuit, demonstrating their understanding of energy, electricity, and magnetism. Congratulations. Why a Sensory Room? Weller Elementary, Amy Ward. This grant will benefit all students at Weller with sensory needs and will be used to purchase supplies to create a sensory room for students who need de-escalation or a gross motor break. This will enable students to regulate and return to the classroom. Congratulations. Pop Culture Magazines for Language Learners, Magzig Middle School, Elise Weichel and Julie Howard. This grant will benefit all Spanish and French students at Magzig and will be used to purchase hard copies of various pop culture magazines intended for students in their target world language. This helps keep language learning personal and relevant while exposing them to products and perspectives of their target cultures. Congratulations. Care Folders for Middle Schoolers, Tower Heights Middle School, Rebecca Such and Christy Harrison. This grant will benefit students at Tower Heights who need support with organizational skills. The objective is to support the transition from elementary to middle school with a one-stop organizational device called a care folder to contain all the materials from their classes. The folder is assembled by adults and are checked twice a quarter. Congratulations. Foundations of Glass Fusing, Tower Heights Middle School, Ashley Isaacs. This grant will benefit all 7th and 8th graders at Tower Heights and will expose students to a new and exciting art medium. Students will learn about jewelry making, non-objective art, and develop an understanding of the science of glass. Congratulations. <laughs> 3D Math, Watts Middle School. Jacqueline Schick, Gabriel Volk, and Gretchen Jansen. This grant will benefit all 6th and 7th graders at Watts and will be used to purchase magnetic learning tiles. The project will support students in their mathematical thinking, allowing them to visualize 3D prisms and pyramids through tactile learning. Congratulations. Paper Coasters, Watts Middle School. Nicole Mick, Christine Tamillo, Melissa Lehman, and Beth Cahill. This grant will benefit all 7th graders at Watts and will be used to purchase supplies for students to design and build their own roller coasters. Roller coasters are a fun and engaging way for students to demonstrate their understanding of gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and energy transformations. Congratulations. <laughs> Lego Wall in the CHS Maker Lab, Centerville High School, Christy Sanderman. This grant will benefit any student at CHS who wishes to take advantage of the Maker Lab. 
The money will be used to purchase Lego bricks as well as a Lego wall upon which Lego creations can be mounted. Allowing students to explore STEM concepts, architecture, and engineering design and artistic expression. Congratulations. Bibliotech Mobile Mobile French Library from Centerville High School, Emily Schluter, Kim Easley, Amber Daly, and Delita Aboud. This grant will benefit all French students at CHS and will be used to purchase student-oriented French novels and other level-appropriate books. Students can self-select their reading material based on their own interests, which will inspire them to continue on their language learning journey, but also provide an excellent foundation for success in their AP level class. Congratulations. And finally, we have Collaborative Mosaic Project from the School of Possibilities, Lauren Spires. This grant will benefit all students at the School of Possibilities and will bring the students and staff together in the creation of an artwork that expresses the spirit and goals of the School of Possibilities. This artwork will be permanently displayed in the entryway of the school, instilling a sense of pride and teamwork. Congratulations. Congratulations to all the teachers who received grants this year, and thank you for all the great work you're doing in our classrooms. For more details on any of these projects, you can visit our website at centervilleeducation.org. Thank you. Thank you. And as, as we mentioned every year, these are just a few of all the great teachers we have in this school. So congratulations again. All righty, next we'll move on to the board recognition, school board recognition month. John? Yes. So thank you. Uh, January is school board appreciation month, and I'd just like to take a moment to thank our, our board and their dedication uh, to Central City School District. Uh, but first, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank Megan Sparks, who has completed her first year um, as president serving the district uh, as a token of our appreciation. We do now have your very own gavel uh, with your name. Um, you cannot use it for this meeting, but we just want to say thank you for your dedication as president and your work uh, as a board member. So the board members exemplify local decision making in education. They volunteer hundreds of hours um, and an immeasurable amount of energy to ensure that our schools are providing the best possible education for all of our children in our community. Uh, for all their hard work and their dedica dedication, I'd like to thank Megan, Allison Durnball, Dr. Rohr, John Dahl, and Mr. Schroyer for your work uh, as a board and your dedication to the district. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. All righty. That's it. All right. Next is public participation. The Board of Education recognizes the value to school governance of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters um, of community interest. Each board meeting at which public presentation is permitted shall follow the following rules of the board. The portion of the meeting for participation of public shall be limited to 30 minutes. Attendees must register their intention to participate on a sign-up sheet 30 minutes prior to each meeting. Individuals may not register other speakers and no participant may speak more than once. Participants must first be recognized by the presiding officer and will be requested to preface their comments by an announcement of their name and whether the participant is a resident or non-resident and if appropriate their group affiliation. Each statement made by the participant shall be limited to three minutes or less. Uh, the board will listen to all who speak, but generally do not engage in discussion or dialogue at this time. Matters requiring follow-up will be directed to the superintendent. Um, we have two signed up. Paul? Good evening. Paul Subject, Washington Township. Speaking for myself. Uh, I, re I read a book that will help our classroom teachers move dependent learners to independent learners and accelerate the growth of independent learners. The book discusses the human brain. It de defines how the brain acquires new concepts, combines data, combines data with existing knowledge to develop new streams of knowledge. It addresses classroom environments that stimulate. It also identifies actions that will close the mind. 
negative stimulations that may close the mind for learning for the entire school day, concepts that every school teacher would want to know. The book details how classroom instructors can build a rapport between the instructor and the student that, that fosters a learning environment. Small actions by the instructor that will demonstrate to the student that he or she is seen as an individual. Something as simple as a smile when the student responds to a question or joins a classroom discussion. The book provides guidance when, when addressing an incorrect response to a question, allowing the instructor to correct the error while keeping the student engaged. The book also points out that people of color are drug abusers and criminals, a concept based solely on their skin color. Would you want this book to be used in the classroom? My thought is that you would reject the book and the author. Now let's move from my theoretical book to reality. The teachers were at, now let's move from, from the fiction of my book to reality, reality of a book recommended to our classroom teachers to read and then spend seven hours discussing. The author is Zaretta Hammond and her book is titled Culturally Responsive Teaching in the Brain approved by ODE Curriculum Committee and the Centerville Curriculum Committee. The book discusses the functions of the human brain and the building of classroom relationships with students. The author develops the themes of white privilege and white racism. According to the author, if you are white, you are racist. I reject that, ass that ass ass assessment. The author implies that white teachers are incapable of teaching students of color because they lack the cultural experiences of their students. By using Ms. Hammond's definitions, the hiring of minority classroom instructors was a huge mistake because our minority instructors do not share the cultural experiences of their white students and therefore they cannot teach them. Or they do share the same cultural as their white students and are therefore incapable of instructing students of color. Both positions are absurd. A teacher teaches and students learn to their God-given ability. I recognize that the vestiges of racism still exist. It will never be completely eliminated. The solution is to infuse into all of our students the joy and reward of learning and how to apply what is learned to life. Accept the reality that you, are, that you will have failures in life. The key is to learn from the failure and to try again. The teaching of victimization benefits neither the individual or society, nor does promoting the concept that all white people are racist. I have provided the treasure with the name of the author of the book. I request that you read the book and decide if the themes of white privilege and victimization represents your beliefs and those of our community. I look forward to hearing your response at a future meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Next, Mike. Good evening. My name is uh, Mike Larson, a resident of Washington Township represent the taxpayers of this community. I would like to th thank the Centerville School District for not using our tax money to support the lawsuit against the state use of school vouchers. The parties of this lawsuit claim school vouchers cause school district fiscal distress, increase school student population segregation, and degrade education quality. I want to share with you the results of a recent Fordham Institute sponsored study conducted by the Ohio State University that shows school vouchers have no impact on school district finances decrease school district population segregation and help improve education quality. Currently, 55,000 students have participate in the Ohio Ed Choice program, voucher program. Vouchers allow parents to make the best choice for their child's education. Parents pay the taxes for schools. It makes the most sense. They should make the decision how the tax money is spent to educate their kids. This study of the school voucher program shows three primary results. First, the result is that school districts show a slight increase in student achievement when school vouchers are introduced. This is due to the competition among private, charter, and local school districts the voucher program engenders. The second result is that school vouchers reduce student population segregation in districts where school vouchers are available. School vouchers reduce the likelihood that Black and Hispanic students attend racially isolated school districts. Indeed, 56% of school voucher users are from minority ethnic families. The result is that black and Hispanic students who remain in their traditional school district enjoy a more diverse educational experience in ed choice vouchers when ed, ed choice vouchers are available. The third result found in the study was that school vouchers do not impact the school district's overall per pupil expenditure level. Additionally, vouchers do not cause local property taxes to rise. This disputes two of the school voucher proponents' primary objectives. I'm sorry, objecting, objections. 
They feel that vouchers leave public schools underfunded and increase the burden on local taxpayers. The data does not show that. The reality is that school districts have the same amount of local tax revenue with less students to educate. I want to encourage Centerville schools to stay away from this lawsuit against our state. The lawsuit is led by a group called the Ohio Coalition for Equity and Adequacy of School Funding. I would like to know if our school district sends any money to this organization, as I'm concerned about their use of taxpayer funds to sue our state. I'm also concerned that the Muskegon Valley Educational Service Center serves as a fiscal agent for this coalition group. This relationship calls into question the objectivity of the Educational Service Center. I would encourage the school board and all citizens in our community to support the school voucher program. This study shows that vouchers improve outcomes for both students and school districts. Please contact your state representative to support House Bill 290, better known as a backpack bill. I'm giving each of you a copy of, of a Cleveland newspaper article about this study, and I will email you a copy to the link of the school voucher study for your own review. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. Our school treasurer will get back to you just with some of the numbers that actually funds do go away from our schools, but she'll get back to you with it, all right? Yep. All right. Seeing no one else at this point, board and, legis board and administrative reports. The uh, legislative report, Megan. The Senate Education Committee held sponsored testimony on Senate Bill 1, which would rename the Department of Education as the Department of Education and Workforce and create the position of Director of Education and Workforce. This bill would reform the functions and responsibilities of the State Board of Education and the Superintendent of Public Instruction. And that is the end of my report. We saw that in December. It got shut down, but it's back again. So that's the end of the report. Thank you. Student board reps. I know nothing. You want to sing? You want to come up and do something? All right. Next financial report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are sorry. Six months through the fiscal year, and so I wanted to give you an update on uh, where we're at with our finances for the year and the general fund. Give me one minute. So I want to talk tonight a little bit about our monthly general fund rolling report. Uh, this slide here is directly from our September board meeting uh, when I when we presented the financial plan for the year uh, to to you, the board, and to the community. Um, and I'm tying that to what you look at every month and what you board approve every month in terms of our finances. So what is our rolling report? Uh, it's a breakdown of our current fiscal year from our financial master plan by month. Uh, I estimate revenues and expenses on, on a monthly basis, and then I update those actual numbers to you every single month so that you can see as we go throughout the year, are we on target with revenues and expenses or are we not on target? Um, so the reason that this is useful is, is exactly that. You're looking at this every single month. So we don't talk about our financial forecast in September or when you board approve it in November and then put it on a shelf and, and don't touch it again for the rest of the year. Uh, we are looking at that every single month. So there's no more waiting anymore until the forecasting periods in November and May. So to give you an update um, on, on revenue, um, and I do wanna mention too, this report we put on the website, on the treasurer's page every single month. And so this is accessible to the community as well. And so everybody can see these numbers anytime they wanna go on the website to take a look. Um, this slide here, this is uh, specifically to our revenue. We break our revenue down into property taxes, state funding, uh, the rollback that we receive from the state, and then any other sources of, of local revenue. Uh, just a reminder, this is just the general fund. Uh, so this ties directly with our five-year forecast, and you can see there's a green box uh, on, this, on this slide. That is the total revenue estimated for fiscal year 23 on the five-year forecast. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay. So I wanted to break down the first six months of the year for uh, our sources of revenue. So property taxes and state funding, uh, if you take a look at that first green box in property taxes, uh, for our first uh, portion of collection, which was in the fall, uh, we received uh, almost 41 million, so just shy of 41 million dollars in property taxes, and I had estimated 41.3. Now I'm not concerned that we were a little bit under that projection because it is just an estimate, and sometimes the timing of those tax bills, it's it's very hard to gauge what's going to be paid in the spring and what's going to get paid in the fall. And so we're going to start our next round of property taxes this month. We'll start getting advances. And so by March, hopefully March, we'll receive our final settlement and I'll be able to report property taxes for the whole year to you then at that point. But, but very close on our estimates for the year so far in property taxes. Uh, the same goes for state funding. We're actually just slightly over our projection for the first six months for state funding. I had estimated um, almost $7 million and we received a little over $7 million uh, for the year. Uh, so again, very close on our state funding. Next, we have our rollback and our other sources of revenue. Uh, rollback, we were just, just shy of our estimate of $12,000 by $12,000. Um, and our uh, other sources of revenue, that includes things like um, reimbursements from the state uh, for tuition payments that we receive from, from students, uh, interest income, uh, pay to participate fees. There's several things that go into this category. Um, we're, again, we're just short by about 50000 but if you look back at the first quarter, we were actually short um, by almost 390000 So we've caught up a little bit uh, during the second quarter. It's very hard to estimate these because the, the timing of payments and things, we, we know in general, but there always is some fluctuation in that. And so finally, in total for the first six months, uh, we are right on target with our revenue, uh, estimated about fifty three point. Um, nine thousand uh, dollars and we've received about fifty four thousand so re we're pretty much right on target with our revenue so the next three months that will be very telling in terms of what our uh, um, revenues are going to be for the year once we receive our second half of the fiscal year uh, property taxes so moving on to then to expenses Again, I have a green box there to show you that uh, we've estimated for the year $115 million um, in expenses, and that's across all categories of our spending in the general fund. It's wages, it's benefits, it's textbooks, it's utilities, it's um, it, it, all of our operating expenses that, that we see. And so, um, again, the $115 million will tie directly to the five-year forecast that we submitted in November to ODE, and now we're tracking that on a monthly basis. And so then here on this slide, you can see um, I've, I've zoomed in a little bit here on wages. We're over a little bit on our wages by 257,000, but we're under on our benefits by 444. I usually look at those kind of together. And so when you net those out, we're just, we're just under our estimate for our wages and benefits uh, for the year through December. And again, that's halfway through our fiscal year. And then all of our other expenses, we're under spending right now. Uh, by about five hundred thousand um, dollars, and again, a lot of fluctuation there on you know when invoices are coming and and uh, that type of thing. So in total for expenses uh, for the year so far, again through December, we're running about seven hundred eighteen thousand dollars under what our projection is. That's very very close when you're talking about the size of budget that we have. Um, so uh, again, you receive this report every month. Um, I look at this and I critique this every single month once we've closed the books and I uh, make sure that I report out to the to the central office team if there's any variances and then I bring those same things to you uh, when there are things to draw attention to. If you don't hear from me, it's because it's, you know, we're, it's just kind of a normal month and things are going just pretty smoothly. So um, are there any questions about this report? Thank you. Well, I appreciate how close these numbers are. In the past, we've always had um, sort of an, un, an overinflation of what our projections were. It always came way under, and it seemed like we were doing better than we are. And these are a lot more accurate, which is which is great. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Next quality profile. Who's doing that? Oh, Sarah. 
Good evening, everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, I am Sarah Swan, the district's community relations specialist. And I just want to add my congratulations to all of the teachers who are here today. Um, one of the fun parts of my job is getting to go into classrooms and um, photograph and, and film um, the learning that goes on. And, and these are just a few of the projects um, that I get to see every day in our schools. Um, tonight, I wanna share with you a little bit about our quality profile. Um, this is something we publish each year that highlights some of the important elements that make up a comprehensive, high quality educational experience for our students here in Centerville. Um, during the 21-22 school year, we made great strides as we celebrated achievements, both large and small, and worked on improvements for some of our processes from teaching strategies to communication. So tonight I'm just going to share a few of those accomplishments with the community and the full profile is available on our website under the About Us tab. So just a few um, highlights as I mentioned, um, our district met or exceeded state expectations for all five components of the 2021-22 Ohio school report cards and nearly half of Ohio state tests taken by our students resulted in accomplished, advanced, or advanced plus scores. Um, we're fortunate to offer world languages beginning in sixth grade and more than 3,000 of our students, our middle and high school students, enroll in French, German, or Spanish each year. Our four-year graduation rate was higher than similar districts in Ohio as well as the state average. We continue to have an A-plus rating on the Lifestyle website niche.com and we're again named a best community for music education. U.S. News and World Report ranks Centerville High School in the top 11 percent of public high schools in the nation and our School of Possibilities was recognized by the Home Builders Association of Dayton for their work in promoting skilled trades. Our enrollment dipped at, like a lot of public schools during the pandemic, but then began rebounding to more than 8,100 students last year. And this year we have more than 8,200 students enrolled in our schools. 11 of our schools have been recognized as Purple Star Schools for their commitment to military families. All of our students were eligible for free meals last year and our student nutrition services staff served nearly 1.2 million meals without an increase in staffing. As part of our commitment to growing the teacher pipeline, um, we were able to match 16 college students from underrepresented populations with mentors from our schools as they learned more about the teaching profession. Um, we worked on engaging with and gathering feedback from our families by holding focus groups, um, sharing surveys, um, and just gathering feedback in different ways. Um, volunteers were once again able to serve in our schools, um, and we had 239 parents and community members who signed up as academic volunteers. And finally, we were one of a select few Ohio school districts to qualify for the Auditor of State Award with distinction. Again, these are just a few of the many accomplishments outlined in our quality profile, and we invite the community to check out the entire booklet on our website. As always, we're very thankful for the support um, our community provides for our students and our staff and our schools. Thank you. Thanks very much. Next, athletic project update. Go, go. Uh, thank you. Um, good evening. Uh, so uh, as Mr. Westy mentioned last week, um, a few years ago, we were approached um, uh, with a with a partnership and uh, a donation of approximately one point five million dollars uh, to help out with a baseball and softball facility. Uh, talks stalled when that project. Uh, we got some estimates that project hitting close to four point five million dollars. Uh, so at that point, um, talks kind of stopped. Um, as you mentioned last week, uh, you're, you're, you're open to the opportunity for this to happen, uh, but not interested in uh, providing taxpayer dollars to help fund it. So uh, that was why that, those talks uh, stalled at that point. Uh, additional donors have come forth recently and uh, stated that they're willing uh, to continue to contribute. Um, they've got some donations that gets us much closer to that $4.5 million. Um, Athletics has some additional needs besides baseball and softball. Um, 
They've got girls wrestling that has uh, just begun. Uh, they, there's more time, more teams that are utilizing the weight room. And so there's some additional uh, ideas that the athletic department has as part of this project. Um, I know you gave uh, permission last week, but uh, wanted to talk about that capital campaign that the athletic department would like to run uh, to help raise one, raise funds, excuse me, uh, for phase one for baseball uh, and softball, but also phase two, uh, which would include uh, wrestling uh, and weight room space for that, the 80 wrestlers uh, currently, uh, 30 of those being female that we've just added this year. So, uh, here's just some, uh, some, some drawings that are part of this process. Uh, again, these are not the exact drawings. These are not uh, the exact uh, dimensions, the exact size, the exact locker room uh, combination, but, but these are the drawing that we preliminary had uh, as, as part of this process when uh, Mr. Westing began researching it a few years ago. Uh, so you can see kind of the location there uh, between baseball and softball. Uh, this part here is phase one, uh, which it does include uh, locker rooms uh, for, for baseball, for softball, uh, includes the, uh, the, the indoor uh, facility, uh, includes batting cages, includes meeting rooms, uh, et cetera. Uh, so that would be part of that, that phase one uh, opportunity. Uh, this is just a little closer view of that. Again, uh, locker rooms might be in a little bit li different location. Restrooms might be in a di little bit different locations. Uh, but, but the main idea here is that uh, we do have that restroom facility uh, for uh, baseball, for softball uh, that's located in close proximity. Uh, it would allow our, uh, our cross-country teams, our tennis teams, to have a meeting spot, changing location in the fall. Uh, so it will be uh, additional usage besides just the, just the springtime. Uh, the second part here is, is phase two that we would like to add uh, as part of this capital campaign and continue to try to raise money for. Uh, the, again, just uh, you can see the, the approximate location. Uh, you can see some additional parking uh, as well as the, uh, the weight room and uh, locker rooms and wrestling room. Again, here's a close-up view of that. You can see phase one. Uh, and then phase two uh, being added on uh, in addition to, which would be the weight room there as part of phase two, uh, locker rooms, storage, and uh, restroom facilities there as, as part of the wrestling room expansion. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, you know, wrestling, uh, approximately 80 students now, uh, 80 student athletes that are part of that process. Um, 30 of those are, are female wrestlers that uh, just began this year. Uh, this space, this facility would would allow uh, an additional more than two times what they currently have here at the high school as part of that. Um, so, so some points here. Um, phase one, baseball and softball facility. Uh, again, that's part of the donation that, uh, uh, that, that are getting us starting. And again, we're uh, 4.5 were those initial estimates. Um, we're closer to 3.5 right now with what, what people have promised. Um, restroom facility uh, that, that is definitely needed uh, for those two, um, two facilities out there. Uh, locker rooms for baseball and softball. Uh, that locker and changing room for, for tennis and cross country uh, in the fall. Uh, it will provide an indoor facility uh, for inclement weather. Uh, there are times where um, you know, the football team, for example, might be practicing at 4 o'clock. A storm rolls through. Um, th this would provide an opportunity. It's not uh, it's not 100 yards. It's not. It's not exactly the size that the football team would need, but it would provide a space for them to go and and continue to work on practice. Uh, phase two uh, will provide a, the weight room. Uh, that again, we've got uh, multiple sports uh, that are currently um, participating and, and utilizing that weight room, uh, wrestling and locker rooms as as part of that process, which I mentioned a couple times. It will provide storage for track equipment. Uh, currently, we're providing uh, purchasing pole vault equipment, um, jump pits, et cetera, uh, at a really more often than we needed to right now, just because we don't have an inside storage facility for those. Uh, they're stored underneath the stadium, so this would help that. Um, it's going to impact uh, by, by freeing up some space here at the high school, it would have an impact on the, the 700 student athletes we have here. Uh, if you if you count the the multi-sport athletes, we're, we're well over a thousand, and then uh, this facility would also uh, help the uh, the youth in our community as well. 
So we appreciate your, your opportunity to, uh, to go forth and uh, seek donations, uh, seek donors, seek partnerships uh, so that, that we can complete this phase one and then phase two, hopefully phase one and phase two at the same time, depending on how the donations go uh, without a cost to, uh, to the board and to the, to the taxpayers. Thank you. Thanks. So we will proceed with phase one once that money's available. That's we're not going to wait for two. That's yes, that's correct. Okay. And the 4.5, as we talked about last time, may actually be more than that now because that was what a year or two or two or three depending ago. Depending on the uh, depending on the the plan and the design, yes, it it could be could be close. Okay. And I'm sorry, Mr. Fogel, the 4.5 was for phase phase one or for both phases together. That was phase one. That was phase one. Okay. And the. The restroom facilities in phase one, those are not just for in they're they're for public use during the events as well, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. All right. Next, Treasurer's recommendations. Consider approving the December 20, 2022 financial statements, monthly general fund rolling report, monthly cash reconciliation, monthly fund activity report. Then and now purchase orders approved by administration, certified by the treasurer, and supported by the board resolution, totaling $23,480.72. So moved. Second. Second. Will the roll, please? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Consider approving the minutes of the following Board of Education meetings. December 12th, 22 work session. December 12th, 22 regular meeting. January 5th, 23, organization meeting. January 17th, work session. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Next, superintendent's recommendations. Superintendent recommends accepting resignations as listed on Schedule A. Superintendent recommends the employment, change of employment status or change of contract status for the certificated personnel listed on Schedule B for the salaries, programs, and on the effective dates given. Recommends the employment of change of employment status for the support staff personnel listed on Schedule C for the salaries, programs, and on the effective dates given. Recommends the employment of personnel listed on Schedule D and D1 for supplemental contracts or extra duty assignments. And recommends the granting of leaves of absence for the personnel listed on Schedule E for the reasons and on the dates given. So, so moved. Moved. Second. <laughs> Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Consider approving the following firms to provide legal services to Centerville City Schools for the calendar year 23. Squire Patton Boggs, LLP, Hoover Six and Associates, LLC, Frost Brown Todd, LLC, Bricker and Eckler, LLP. A lot of initials here, John. I know. <laughs> Coolidge Wall and Wamsley and Lombard, LLPA. Ohio School Board Association and Hunter Consulting. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. So next few items, again, just to reiterate, we discuss a lot of these in our work sessions, so none of these are new to us, uh, even though we go through them rather quickly. They've all been discussed at our work session. Consider approving a resolution stating the Centerville City Schools does not intend to provide career tech education to students enrolled Grades seven and eight for the year 23-24. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Consider approving a resolution declaring certain items of personal property obsolete and unneeded and authorizing the superintendent or his designee to sell the personal property. So moved. Second. Again, these are, these are products that we do this every year. As things become obsolete, either we try to sell them or we destroy them. Um, some are saved to use that we need, but uh, this is a yearly occurrence for us. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Yeah. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Consider approving a resolution authorizing school administration to recommend for employment substitute teachers who meet the criteria set forth in Senate Bill 1 and in House Bill 583 in accordance with local requirements through the conclusion of 23-24 school year. So moved. Second. Again, this is the uh, ability for military personnel um, that meet the criteria that um, we, we try to employ them 
if the need is so there. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Call the roll. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Consider approving a resolution authorizing the purchase of 350 Acer laptop computers for CDWG for a total of $294,087.50. And this money is through the PI fund. So moved. Second. And again, this is something we do also as the use of these computers sort of go beyond their term, which is normally what, 10? Five. Five years. And these are already at six years. So we try to get as much out of this as we can. But this is a, a yearly occurrence that we do through the permanent improvement levy. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Next, any final comments regarding past or old business from the Board of Education? Seeing none, I have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. <clears throat> Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Thank you all for coming.